is News 3 Now at 6. And first happening now, authorities are searching for two inmates who escaped a maximum security prison in Portage this morning. They're believed to have climbed to security fences at Columbia Correctional Institution, then made it to a local hotel where they called a cab. Madeline O'Neill is live outside of Lodi right now, where there is currently a heavy, heavy police presence right now. Maddie? Mm -hmm. We're here on Highway K near the interstate, where there are dozens of vehicles. Lodi police are asking that people avoid the area. Dispatch is telling concerned residents to stay at home and be alert. But we aren't hearing much else from authorities. So let me tell you what I've seen. So when I was driving here, there would be a police car every so often, state patrol car. When I got here and parked, there were three vehicles. Then pretty quickly, several more came. Many officers were outside. We saw many going into the woods and the fields. There's also canine vehicles here. I saw a drone in the air, some officers walking with their guns out. So while there's clearly something happening here, we don't have any confirmation that this is linked to the inmate escape. So now what we do know about that, uh, the Columbia County Sheriff's Office told us earlier this afternoon that 37 year old James Newman and 46 year old Thomas Deering escaped from the Columbia Correctional Institution around five this morning. Both have escape convictions for for fleeing facilities in the past. Columbia County Sheriff Roger Brandner says this is the first escape from the max security prison he can remember in his 30 years here. Yeah, they've got experience with escape. Uh, they got some very serious charges that they're in prison for. Uh, I, I imagine that uh, they are thinking that they don't want to go back and uh, that's why it's a concern for all of us. That's why we had almost every officer out this morning looking right away in tracking it. That's why we involve the federal agencies because um, we want to keep our community safe. And Authorities say the Columbia Correctional Institution is cooperating fully with the investigation as they try to put the pieces together of what exactly happened. The sheriff didn't know the inmates ultimate destination, but said there were indications that they were heading south. Now earlier today, the Columbia County Sheriff said they didn't believe that the inmates were in Columbia County any longer. That was this afternoon. Now, of course, again, we're here outside Lodi right on the county line still in Columbia County. Again, we can't confirm that this is related to the inmate escape, but clearly something is happening here. It's something that we'll keep on top of and we'll keep you updated on channel 3000.com. Maddie, thank you. And breaking news from the Channel 3000 Alert Center. In the last half hour, we've learned a casino and resort near downtown Beloit is one step closer to reality. The Ho-Chunk Nation's application has been approved by the Bureau of Indian Affairs. It now moves to Governor Tony Evers' desk for review. City Manager Lori Curtis Luther said while the federal approval is news they've wanted for, they've waited for many years to receive, the city is remaining focused on the current state of emergency. She says once the crisis is over, they look forward to celebrating the announcement. The Ho-Chunk Nation's development is expected to bring 1,500 jobs to the city of Beloit. We're continuing to follow the de developing story impacting all Wisconsinites tonight. Governor Evers has extended the Safer at Home order. It was scheduled to expire next Friday, but it's now going to last until May 26th to help slow the spread of coronavirus. And we have team coverage tonight. Gabriella Becerra has an update on what it means for the end of the school year. Adam Duxter explains the expected business impact. But first, Amy Reed live downtown with more on the governor's decision. Amy. Evers said he's basing his decision on what science is telling us. The curve is flattening. In order to continue that, we have to keep doing what we're doing. There are some modifications with this new extension, though. A few here golf courses will be allowed to open again. Libraries and craft stores will be able to do curbside pickup. Non-essential businesses will be able to do minimum basic operations like deliveries, mailings, and curbside pickup. Some have already spoken out against this extension, but Evers says it's what we have to do. And believe me, no one wants to reopen our economy as much as I do. But the bottom line is that our businesses, our workers, and us as consumers can't be confident if we're not confident about our safety and our health. A long-standing, permanent statutory 
As part of a Midwest Governors Partnership, Evers will be working with governors from Michigan, Ohio, Minnesota, Illinois, and Kentucky to coordinate, re coordinate reopening. But without a specific plan, Evers has gotten some criticism from Republicans in the Senate and Assembly, some even calling for the head of the state's response, DHS Secretary-designee Andrea Palm, to be fired. We are hearing from several state Republicans tonight who are against the extended order, particularly when it comes to the state's economy. Speaker Robin Voss and Majority Leader Jim Steinecke, along with the Assembly Republican Caucus, said in a statement, quote, people are frustrated and so are we. Many citizens can't get through to the governor's office and have asked us to be their voice. While everyone shares the goal of protecting public health, the governor's order goes too far. The statement also said safer at home main goal was to flatten the curve, which we've successfully done, and not to devastate our families. Legislative Republicans say they are planning legal action. And extending that safer at home order means big changes for teachers, students, and those students' parents. Gabriella Becerra joins us now with what the remainder of the academic school year will look like now. Gabby? Eric, with the order extended until late May, school districts are turning to online learning for the rest of the school year. Students first began online learning after the Safer at Home order was first issued on March 25th. Middleton Cross Plains Area School District says as they finish this year online, they're already thinking about there are they're already thinking about what's going to be needed when this is over. What we're recognizing and, and hearing from folks is that there's going to need to be some remediation that takes place, whether it's when we come back in the fall or I know a lot of districts are talking about um, uh, a more robust summer school. Madison's interim superintendent, Dr. Jane Belmore, says although this district appreciates and supports the governor's decision and it's in the best interest of students, families, and staff, it's also very sad news for the school community. She mentioned the important personal connections between students and staff that have been cut short and also said the graduating class has had to sacrifice a lot. Now, as virtual learning has been in the process for about one or two weeks, they're starting to take the time to evaluate and adjust where needed uh, because this has never been done before. Adam Duxter is live downtown with reaction from the business community and shares how this is going to affect the economy long term. Well, Gabby, admittedly, this is a tough change for business, especially those in the hospitality industry who on a spring day like today would normally be counting on a full house. But those in the restaurant industry I spoke with today say they understand their role in flattening the curve in fighting COVID-19. Now, Jennifer DeBolt, who manages the old fashioned, says public health is their main concern. And the last thing they'd want to do is get one of their employees or customers sick. Madison Chamber of Commerce President Zach Brandon says as reopening the local economy could be a complex process. What constitutes reopening? Now, right now, we're, we're still very much in the relief phase, but how do we get to a point where we are thinking strategically, not tactically, about reopening? And I don't think we've seen that yet. In the meantime, restaurants like the Old Fashioned are taking advantage of takeout and delivery orders. And Brandon says, well, the hospitality industry and other parts of the local economy were forced to sort of stop on a dime when the first stay at home order came out. Reopening all the parts of the economy will not be as smooth of a trend or will be a little bit more of a difficult transition. But he says the Chamber of Commerce is doing everything they can to help support those local businesses in the meantime. Adam and Gabby, thank you both. Well, the number of positive cases in Wisconsin now pushing 4,000. We started tracking this data back on March 18th, nearly a month ago now. Right now, there are 198 deaths in Wisconsin, including the first reported death in Richland County. Statewide, that's up 15 from yesterday. Milwaukee County, over 2,000 cases, 114 deaths. Dane County, over 350 cases, including 17 deaths. A UW System Regents Committee has authorized employee furloughs now. The Regents Executive Committee voted unanimously to let System President Ray Cross develop plans for UW System Institutions 
Regents and UW-Madison Chancellor Rebecca Blank will develop a plan for the flagship campus here in Madison. Regents President Drew Peterson said furloughs will be implemented on a rolling basis across groups of schools. With the coronavirus pandemic, many sports seasons are being put on hold, even canceled in some cases. Today, American Family followed suit, announcing the cancellation of the AmFam Golf Championship this year. Our sports director, Zach Hanley, now has more on this very big decision today. Zach? Yeah, you thought after postponing the tournament last week, the hope was to reschedule later in the summer, but obviously that didn't happen with the AmFam Insurance Championship, along with all the other events that week getting canceled. Alternative dates were looked at, but ultimately the health and safety of everyone involved took precedent. But there was something good to come out of this in the form of $2.8 million back to those in I, need. I think we've had a great... And speaking of golf, as many mentioned, the local courses will be able to reopen on April 24th with some restrictions. Clubhouses, locker rooms, and pro shops still have to stay closed, so tee times need to be made over the phone. But golfers will be now able to swing away. So, Eric... Uh, some positives Some there Some positives, and I heard that you were paying for the first 18. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when that opens, no, no, but that is great. They're still doing the charity part of that. I know that means yeah. a lot to Steve Stricker yeah. and that group. That is a huge uh, piece of news there. Zach, thank you very much. <laughs> we are learning more about the death investigation in Beloit from earlier this week it is now being called a homicide Beloit police say the body of 18 year old Jawan Lehman of Janesville was found on Royce Avenue right around 6 30 p.m. on Tuesday they say evidence suggests it was a targeted homicide yesterday police say the crime did not happen in Beloit and they are working with the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department in Illinois in the investigation the two 18 year olds facing murder charges and the deaths of a Madison doctor and her husband appeared in court via video call today. The court entered not guilty pleas on behalf of Kari Sanford and Elijah LaRue. The bodies of Dr. Beth Potter and Robin Kari were found in the UW Arboretum on March 31st. Sanford was dating the couple's daughter. According to a criminal complaint, a friend told detective Sanford confessed to the shooting and said LaRue was with him. The friend was able to provide specific details about the shooting that had not been released to the public. All right, let's check your First warm forecast, here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? After having some sunshine today, clouds are starting to move in from the southwest as a weather system kind of skirts southern Wisconsin just to our south across Illinois and Iowa. On Doppler track, you can see a large area of snow not too far to our south and west, but it's moving almost straight east, and that will keep the bulk of the snow just south of the Wisconsin-Illinois state line. Temperatures right now are in the upper 30s to the lower 40s, but tomorrow morning will be down to the lower 30s with cloudy skies and maybe some light snow or flurries down toward the Illinois state line. That should end early tomorrow morning. Then look for skies to turn partly sunny. It won't be quite as chilly with a high of 49 expected for tomorrow. Still looking for high temperatures close to 60 on Saturday and some 60s next week. I'll have more details and weather in a few minutes. Okay, Gary, thank you. And ahead on News Now at 6, how farmers and the Hunger Task Force are working together to make sure more milk is not wasted in Wisconsin. That's after a short break. Stay with us. You can garden safer at home with the help of Junk Garden Center. Curbside pickup is now available at all five Junk Garden Center locations. Visit JunkSeed.com to learn how to place your pickup order so you can get your home growing season off to a safe and healthy start. I want to have a million dollars when I retire. Oh, great goal. So where do I start? Well, first you set up automatic transfers into savings. That can add up pretty quickly. For me, working on putting $1,000 into an emergency fund got me in a good saving habit. Already on it. Then put together a plan to get rid of debt and maximize your investments. You know, Summit helped me do it. Oh, that's great. I love how Summit gives people the knowledge and confidence to go after their goals. It's your money. Own it. Summit Credit Union. Imagine facing Wisconsin's bitter cold winter without a warm home, or the blistering heat of summer without power. Then having to make the tough choice between eating or meeting other basic survival needs. Unfortunately, over 200,000 of our neighbors in need will face this difficult decision with no place else to turn, including those who are now unemployed due to the COVID-19 crisis. For a hand up and help with your utility bills now during these difficult times, contact the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund today. It started with one man and his father's simple advice. 
He said, son, make sure the quality of work is worthy of the family name. Over 20 years and thousands of clients later, Fry Construction still follows this advice, giving you the very best craftsmanship for roofing, windows, and gutters. If you want to trust the work done on your home, trust the family name that's behind it. Start with Fry Construction and Home Improvement at FryConstruction.com. You can garden safer at home with the help of Junk Garden Center. Curbside pickup is now available at all five Junk Garden Center locations. Visit JunkSeed.com to learn how to place your pickup order so you can get your home growing season off to a safe and healthy start. Authorities in Janesville are responding to a report of a fire at a mobile home park. This is at Meadowview Mobile Home Park near Rockport Park. A caller reported that fire about 5.18 p.m. Janesville firefighters are on the scene now. We'll continue to follow this developing story and have updates at channel3000.com. Local health care providers are reaching out to expecting mothers who are nervous about the safety of hospital delivery right now. Unity Point Health Meritor, UW Health and SSM Health say they recognize there might be heightened anxiety during the coronavirus pandemic, but they are assuring soon to be mothers that they are taking a lot of safety precautions. All visitors are screened with a temperature check before they are allowed into the hospital and only one visitor is allowed to accompany moms who are in labor. Hospitals are also adhering to CDC guidelines around cleaning and proper use of PPE. We are really doing everything we can to make the hospital still be the safest place that you can have your baby. Um, we feel strongly that we can still provide that safe environment and that um, our moms are still be, will still be supported during their labors and births. If any mothers in labor are identified as having a potential exposure to COVID-19, SSM Health has a dedicated wing of the labor and delivery unit to keep them isolated. Expectant moms are encouraged to contact their doctor or midwife to discuss any concerns before delivery. Hunger Task Force in Milwaukee is saving thousands of gallons of milk from being dumped. Hannah Hilliard from our Milwaukee affiliate WISN has the story. The Hunger Task Force needs a lot of milk and dairy farmers in Wisconsin have a lot of it. So much, they dump surplus milk down the drain. We've never seen anything like this. Um, they're extremely stressed. Hunger Task Force and its donors to the rescue. The organization is now committing $1 million for its new Wisconsin Dairy Recovery Program. Hunger Task Force does routinely buy truckloads of food when people don't donate a specific item, but a million dollars is a lot of money especially at the Hunger Task Force. Since the pandemic started, more donations are coming into the Hunger Task Force. So they are putting that money where they feel it can help the most. I thought it was a win-win-win for everybody. It's a win for the farmers when they get finally get paid for their milk. It's a win for the producer who's bottling the milk and putting people to work, as well as the logistics people who are driving it around. And it's a win for hungry people. The task force will buy the milk from different farms in the state. Kemp's Dairy will bottle it up, then it'll all be stored in a cooler before it is sent out to families in need. The owner of a local firehouse subs franchise is doing something good, delivering meals to first responders. Eric Irwin, owner of the location on Fish Hatchery Road off the Beltline, says giving back to the community is part of the firehouse subs legacy. A portion of all proceeds goes to the firehouse subs public safety foundation, which helps provide life-saving equipment to first responders. And now this franchise location is donating food to two Madison fire stations, two Sun Prairie fire stations and second harvest food bank at this point they're out fighting the uh, COVID-19 virus and they need all the help and relief that they can get hopefully we'll bring a little joy to their heart and a nice meal and uh, just take a little pressure off of them Firehouse Subs was able to donate more than 100 boxed meals thanks to a $2,000 donation from Brain Excel. They're a local company located in University Research Park that provides human brain cells to researchers around the world who are trying to find cures for neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and ALS. And there's more to come tonight on News for Now at 6. Another cool day. Could we see a warm up soon? Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti will have more ahead in your first worn forecast.
My wife, my sweetheart, took care of me for 46 years, and I've loved every moment. When the doctor gave her six months, all she wanted was to spend it at home with me. Now it's my turn to take care of her. I know a grace will help me care for the one I've loved my whole life. A grace, hospice, and palliative care. Just call. A grace will help. We live here just like you. We have families, friends, and neighbors we care about just like you. Since 1930, Grand Appliance has supported our local communities, and we aren't stopping now. We're open to serve you and offering an extra 5% off most purchases during these uncertain times. Visit our website day or night where we've expanded live chat, email, and phone support. We'll deliver curbside, drop off at your front door, or deliver and install. We are Grand Appliance and TV. Coming together makes us stronger, and Ford is built to lend a hand. Contact your Ford dealer, an essential part of your community, to find out more about home delivery and other vehicle service options. After all, you have a lot to take care of. Let us help take care of you. Find out more at Ford.com. Right now, qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months, plus three months deferred payments on select 2020 Ford models. Americans have been cutting the lawn for hundreds of years, but with TurfBot, the future of mowing is now. Our quiet, all-electric robotic mowers work around the clock to keep your lawn trimmed 24-7. That means less time spent mowing and more time spent enjoying. Equipped with LED headlights, auto-stop sensors, and anti-theft GPS devices, our mowers run safely with no supervision. Come home to a freshly mowed lawn every day for as little as $30 a week. Call today and get free installation when you sign up. TurfBot, on the cutting edge. Getting meals to go from Hy-Vee is even easier with the new Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go website and curbside pickup. Just order delicious meals online and get no contact pickup. Choose from Chinese, sushi, fried chicken, lasagna, enchiladas, burgers, pizza, many of your favorite sides, and more. Just order online at hyvee.com backslash mealtime. Then park in a designated mealtime spot and we'll bring your order out. Feed your family for less and order Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go today. Well, it's the middle of April. Temperatures are below normal, but fortunately, we're not dealing with severe weather. This is Tornado and Severe Weather Awareness Week, and, and today normally would have been the statewide tornado drill, but obviously it was canceled because of the COVID-19 outbreak. However, tonight I want to talk about what you need to do when a tornado threatens and you're not at home. Probably the best thing I could say is either be at home, plan to be at home, or someplace familiar, because your odds of surviving a tornado are much better than if you're someplace where you're not familiar with what to do. If you're on the road in a vehicle, get Get out and seek shelter in a sturdy nearby building. That's the best thing you can do. You don't want to wait until the last minute because your next two choices are not very good ones. As a last resort, you can either get out of the car and get into a ditch and try to cover yourself to protect yourself from flying debris or buckle up and get down as low as possible in the car and try to use the doors and the metal of the car to shield you as much as possible, but be aware that you're surrounded by windows and debris could be flying in through there. So uh, either one of those choices is not a very good one. Your better ch chance to survive is getting into a sturdy building. If you're in a public building, find an interior room away from windows. If there's a safety plan, follow that. And if you're in a large store, like a grocery store or a department store with a long flat roof, try to find someplace either away from there or in a small room because those roofs tend to uh, cave in very easily during severe weather so those are not good places to be. High resolution Doppler radar right now pretty quiet across Wisconsin but not far to our south and west there's a large area of snow from eastern Nebraska into southern Iowa that's moving almost due east so the far northern edge of that precipitation could clip far southern Wisconsin. Now the, the snow amounts will ramp up pretty quickly down to the south. Winter storm warnings are in effect for southern Iowa, northern Missouri and west central Illinois. And winter weather advisories are in effect into the Chicago area. As far as snowfall amounts, very little, if any, accumulation expected over far southern Wisconsin. That would mainly be south of Janesville. But you get into Illinois, and those amounts start winding up in the one to three inch range from around Rockford southward, and then maybe as much as six to ten inches down toward uh, southern Missouri or northern Missouri and uh, southern Iowa. So three things you need to know in the forecast: maybe a few flurries or some very light snow near the Illinois state line overnight. Then look for 50s to return this weekend. Upper 50s. Saturday, lower 50s on Sunday, and then mainly dry weather, other than an outside chance of a shower Saturday night expected into the first half of next week. Then some shower and thunderstorm chances will return toward the end of the week. 
For tomorrow, look for some clouds early in the day. Skies will become partly sunny. Any lingering snow will end very early. High temperature topping out at 49, so not quite as chilly. Again, the snow amounts will be south of the Wisconsin-Illinois state line, so we're not looking for anything more than a few flurries south of Janesville. 7 to 10 day forecast, you can see those temperatures getting back up into the upper 50s Saturday. A brief cool down on Sunday, and then temperatures more likely to be in the 60s into the mid-60s for much of next week with some shower and thunderstorm chances. We'll be right back. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Through all the world events since 1936, Culligan Water has continued to provide better, safer water with our filtration systems for homes and businesses. These days, as a designated essential business, Culligan's water professionals are standing by ready to help. Here at Weedman Lawn Care, we believe that your lawn should be a place where memories are made, a source of pride, relaxation, and fun for the whole family. That's why we proudly offer a child and pet friendly program so you can enjoy a healthier, greener, weed free lawn without sacrificing peace of mind. Our program offers effective, targeted weed control, and our golf course quality fertilizer creates a beautiful outdoor space. Don't your kids and grandkids deserve a Weedman lawn? Trust the lawn care experts. Trust Weedman. <laughs> No one asked for this to happen, but this is our time when our hearts, our humanity, and our communities rise. This moment will challenge us. It will define us. It's why we are here, but this moment is not bigger than us, and we will show up every day for you. Unity Point Health Meritor, a partner of UW Health. Know how much you matter to this world. To our Pick and Save Associates, for the long hours and late nights, for the miles traveled and the shelves restocked, for making a difference in our customers' lives, for doing so much more than your job. Everyone at the Kroger family of brands and our customers say thank you. In a time when daily life feels a bit uncertain, your hard work is keeping America fed. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Hi, it's Jan from Toyota. As part of your community, we're here to help you during these challenging times. Keeping your Toyota safe and reliable is important, especially right now. Many of our service centers are open. Schedule service online and drop off and pick up your vehicle with no contact. Need to replace your old vehicle? Most Toyota dealers offer online shopping and will defer your first payment for 90 days. We're here for you. Contact your local Toyota dealer to see how they can help. Toyota. All right, we do have some breaking news right now related to the escaped inmates. Let's go to Maddie O'Neill near Lodi with the very latest. Maddie? Well, we've been out here for about two hours since these police vehicles have gotten here. Just got off the phone with Dane County Sheriff's Office. They were able to confirm that they're assisting with this. They call it a search, but they were not able to say who it is for. But again, they were able to confirm it is a search. This is being handled by the Columbia County Sheriff's Office, who hasn't been able to offer us any more information, but we have seen plenty of police um, authorities out here looking. It seems like they're looking for something. So now we know they're looking for individuals. Um, we'll definitely keep you updated on channel3000.com and have an update on News 3 Now and at 10 as well. All right, Maddie, thank you very much. We'll see you back here tonight for News 3 Now at 10. Take care.